Hello. Hi there. Today, Nick is going to rank the top 10 books that I've read this year. Mm-hmm. Mind you, Nick has not read any of them. So he's going based off of his own judgment. I'm judging the book by its cover. Pretty much. Here are the books. Okay. But I will move them out of the frame because you can't see both of us. So, mm-hmm. you ready? Born ready. Born ready. So, which book are you starting with? We'll start from 10. Okay. So, this what is was like my 10th favorite book, mm-hmm. basically. Okay. Um, let's go. So, just to clarify, like these are your, your top 10 right here, mm-hmm. right? Okay. So, this one is called The Final Offer. I'm going to say this was number 10 because I feel like Final Offer just sounds like business type of stuff. Like, it's like a business deal. And that just doesn't sound like something Jared would really want to read a ton about. So, The Final Offer, probably number 10. That's what I'm guessing. So, number 10. Okay. <laughs> What's next? So number nine, I realize this is also a Lauren Asher book. Um, <laughs> this one is called Terms and Conditions. So I'm placing this one at number nine because Terms and Conditions just sounds like that stuff you have to read when before you like can download the software, and that just does. It sounds really boring, kind of to me. Like nobody wants to read the Terms and Conditions. So for that reason, I'm gonna say this was book number nine for Jerry. Okay. Terms and Conditions. All right. Uh, okay. Terms and conditions, number nine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You hear any noise in the background? That's our cat. So coming in at number seven, I'm going to say... That was uh, number nine. So that was ten, oh, nine. Oh. Coming in at number eight, I'm going to say it's The Housemaid by Frida McFadden. Um, mm-hmm. And the reason being, I feel like Jerry probably does like too much of the housework around the house. <laughs> so this may have given her... Like some, ba- some flashbacks mm. maybe maybe it's like it's not her favorite thing to do to, to clean up after my mess so for mm. that reason i'm gonna say this is number seven for ranking freedom mcfadden the housemaid number eight eight number mm-hmm. eight okay so what is your how do you figure out which one goes next like what's your thought process just like what the title is basically mm-hmm. like that's it and the cover kind of it's mm-hmm. mostly just the title Mm-hmm. I'm not even thinking about author. I know, like, yeah, I'm probably wrong on a lot of these, but that's part of the fun, I think. So. Mm-hmm. It is. Yeah. I believe in you. So coming in at number seven, I'm going to go with Jerry's favorite. Number seven was My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. And I'm going to say this is number seven just because I think this is kind of like a new um genre maybe i'm guessing this genre is like just dark maybe i'm not sure entirely like i don't know like she yeah what what, what genre is this jerry it's like literary fiction literary fiction yeah is it like a crime or something I, a crime is involved okay that's kind of like an up-and-coming area that she's been reading about so mm-hmm. not like super high up there in the rankings but number seven that one sounds reasonable so i'm gonna go with seven seven my dark vanessa, my dark vanessa. getting down to the wire so coming in at number we'll be at six now this is number six eight ten nine eight seven six so yep. coming in at number six six favorite book of the year i'm gonna say real easy by mary rutkowski and the reason being if something is really easy like it can't be the top like i feel like it has to you have to have a challenging book be so this couldn't if it's a real easy book to read it couldn't be like the top three mm-hmm. if it's too easy it can't be that good. yeah nothing so. can be real easy right yeah. so for that reason number six so for jerry's fifth favorite book of the year i'm going to go with yellow face by rf kwang and i think this would be five because I think it was like a very hyped up book in the media so maybe it was like there's too much hype around it um it can't be like top three you know like it can't live up to the hype because i just heard like oh my god nick we need to go buy this book like right when it comes like 
did you go over and did you go try to pick up this book like the day it came out or was that something else no that was another book but that i else. i begged to get this book the day it came out okay yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. so that for that reason like it can't be top three because it maybe was too too much hype mm-hmm. i could be wrong though mm-hmm. what do you think of the book based off of its cover it looks something that would come out in 2023 i'll mm-hmm. say that like yeah yellow face mm-hmm. number five is yellow face so coming in at number four, I'm going to go with I Have Some Questions For You by Rebecca Mackay. And I'm going to say number four because this is like a crime thriller. So it's maybe not Jerry's like main interest in reading, but it's one that she's getting more interested into. Would you agree with that? Or... I've been well, yeah, reading a lot of crime. Yeah, yeah, so maybe it's not her favorite genre to read, but it's still pretty good. So for that reason, I'm going to say four. Four. Coming in at number three, I'm going to go with Happy Place by Emily Henry. So I think I heard Jerry give some praise for this book. Um, so I'm just going to put it at three. It's got a cool looking cover. There's some kids at the at the beach. It sounds like a fun time. Mm-hmm. Maybe not good enough to be one or two, but three sounds right. So. Yeah, a lot of people have had some mixed, Happy place. A lot of people have had some mixed opinions about the book. It was my first Emily Henry book. I liked it yeah okay. maybe i scored it too high but that's okay <laughs> thank you okay he's down to the final two okay so number two i'm gonna go with love redesigned by lauren asher so i know that lauren asher was her favorite author i know i think i put some other lauren asher books really low so that was those are probably off but this one i think i'm gonna just say two because it's a really thick book I think like Jerry is like mostly into the normal normal length books. I'm not sure if she's t- really into the massive size books, which is just kind of on the larger side. So I'm just yeah for that reason I'm gonna say number two, Love okay. Redesigned by Lauren Asher. Yeah, that was the one where I went to the bookstore and they didn't have it, so okay. that was a disappointment. And then finally number one, I'm gonna go with The Push by Ashley Audrain and I. I fucked up because I thought this was a Lauren Asher book, <laughs> but it's not, and I, I read the author wrong, so this one is just going to have to take one <laughs> by default, because I thought it said Lauren Asher, but it's actually <laughs> Ashley Audrey. <laughs> so yeah, number one is The Push by Ashley Audrey. It looks cool. It looks like a Rorschach type of diagram, um, like the colors is purple and blue. So yeah, number one. The push. The push. Number one book is the push. Some of it is close. Like some of it is close. Um, I liked your reasoning for some of them. Some of them I wouldn't have. Uh, I would have placed a little higher. But I think I think this is good. I think you did a good job. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I didn't do any of these, so. Mm-hmm. I might cut that shit. You want to say it again? I didn't. I didn't read any of these books, so mm-hmm. just kind of taking my best guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think you did a good job. Good job. Oh, Otto's here. Oh. What was your favorite book? So I appreciate your rankings. I thought they were great. I do. Okay. So I would say the book that I would put at number 10 would probably be The Housemaid by Frieda McFadden. It was good. I just felt like it was the perfect starter thriller compared to the other ones I've read this year. So yeah, I would put Rita McFadden number 10. Ooh, this is tough. I think I would probably put Final Offer at number... So yeah, you got this one right, right? No. I, I said nine. This... Yeah, I think I'd put this or... at number nine. I think you said Wait, I put 10. It 10. I put yeah, it 10, but yeah. basically, I think I'd put Final Offer at number 10. Um, Lauren Asher was my favorite author this year. So, like I said, uh, Passmate number 10, Final Offer number 9. Hmm. I would have to say Real Easy. Yeah, probably Real Easy at number 8. This book is a crime book and it's like um, an exotic dancer gets killed. And so it's like the cops trying to figure it out. Um, so like real easy it's like nothing is really easy in this book mm-hmm. yeah but it's good i think i'll put it at number eight mm-hmm. i love all of them 
I'd have to say I'd put the push probably next. I love the push. The push, I loved this book. Like, I wouldn't put number one, but I loved it. I really did. This is really tough because I loved all of these books. But I probably would put the push at number 10, 9, 8, 7. But I loved the push. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't mind it being number one. And then probably, ooh, I probably would put Yellow Face next. I really enjoyed Yellow Face. Some people said they wished it was shorter. I wished it was longer. When I got to the ending, I felt like I needed more. So I'd probably put Yellow Face at, why can't I count? 10, 9, 8, 7. The Yellow Face at number 6. I probably would put Love Redesigned at number 5, top 5. Remove that one. I probably would put Love Redesigned at number 5. I really enjoyed this book. It was very cute. It was another billionaire romance. How do you feel about billionaire romances? I'm a billionaire, so it makes sense, yeah. Right, yeah. So it, it like relates to his real life. So that's why he loves them. Uh, so I probably put Love Redesigned at number one, two, three, four, five, five. Number four. And then I probably would put Terms and Conditions next. Yeah, number four. So Love Who Designed was number five, and then Terms and Conditions at number four. I really love Lauren Asher. I plan on reading the rest of her books. She has an F1 series. I'm planning on reading that one next year. Like race car? Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, F1 series. I'm planning on reading it next year, you know, once I can buy it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about my book buying habits this year? It's not the most expensive hobby. Like, mm -hmm. there's, yeah, it's tolerable. Mm -hmm. And I would say My Dark Vanessa would go next. Uh, this book, it's about the relationship between a teacher. So when you ask me about crime, there's a crime that does take place. It's the relationship between a teacher and a student. Okay. And uh, grooming and trauma. But it's really good. Yeah. Would you be interested in yeah. reading it? No? Yeah. yeah. We'll see. But yeah, it's really good. Yeah, I would probably put it in my top three. Keep, oh, oh. Yeah, sorry. Probably would be Happy Place as number two. It's a very cute second chance romance. It was very emotional um, when I was rooting for these two characters. I felt really connected to the female main character in this book. Um, and yeah, I really liked it. So I would probably put Happy Place as my second. And then I have some questions for you as like my number one favorite book this year. It's a crime. I do really like crime. Crime is like probably the top genre that I had this year. Um, it's something I got into this I year. Was a off, and this one, it follows a woman who's a true, kind of like a true crime podcaster. Mm -hmm. And she comes back to her old, her old school. She used to go to boarding school and there was a crime that can, took place to her roommate when she was in school. Mm -hmm. And so it's about her dealing with that, the ethics of true crime, the Me Too movement. And I just thought it was absolutely brilliant. So the Me, the Me Too, what? I have some questions for you. It's probably my number one book. So how do you think you did? Um, it was a little off, but some of them were, were in the right spot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, all of these are interchangeable. Like I'd recommend them to anybody, but if I had to choose my top two, it'd probably be these two. So this is my reading list for next year. Yeah, uh-huh. This is reading list for next yeah. year. <laughs> this is his goal, is to read these 10 books. Yes. Well, thank you, Nick, for being in my video. Of course. Yes. And do you have anything you want to shout out? Shout out to Amazon for getting those cheap books fast to Jerry. Thank you, Amazon. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Anything you want to personally plug? I always make Jerry look up the Amazon price when we go into Barnes & Noble just before we buy a book. She, she, does. doesn't, she doesn't like when I do that, but you, you need to show me. It's, I, I mean, mm -hmm. I get real nervous. We have Prime. We have to, I mean, just, just use it. I get nervous. I'll be like, oh my gosh, Nick, I really want this book. And then he'll be like, oh, how much is it on Amazon? And he'll put out his phone and start typing. Yeah. Or the li yeah, that's next year, the library. You're going to get a library card, right? Yes. When is that going to happen? Yes. Li library card next year. Yeah. Library card. Library card. Or maybe 2025. No. 2025. No, a library card. Soon. Okay, got to go. Bye.